Very good morning. Welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Ashwarya with you with the biggest news stories from India and across the world coming up in the next 30 minutes. First up, a look at the top headlines. First cross-border petroleum pipeline for India and Nepal. Prime Minister Modi and Nepalese Prime Minister Oli to jointly inaugurate Modihari Amlek Ganj pipeline through video conference for cost-effective and environment-friendly supply of petroleum products. Centre sets up a three-member panel to divide assets and liabilities among new union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Government to procure 12 lakh metric tons of apples from go growers at remunerative prices. Kashmiri Panchayat representatives to meet Vice President Venkaya Naidu today. Seven 1984 riot cases to be reopened. Special investigation team issues public notices asking individuals and organizations to give information related to the cases. Heavy to very heavy rains predicted in 32 districts of Madhya Pradesh, life thrown out of gear in capital Bhopal and several other districts after the heavy downpour on Monday. Schools shut in seven districts. And Captain Karuna Ratne Malinga among 10 Sri Lankan players opt out of tour of Pakistan due to security concerns. Players were allowed to decide on their participation after a security briefing. Team scheduled to play three one-day international and three T20 matches in Pakistan from 27th of September. top story that we are tracking this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli will today jointly inaugurate the Modihari Amlek Ganj cross-border petroleum products pipeline from their respective offices in New Delhi and Kathmandu through video conference. The inauguration will be done through video conference amid uh, the presence of high-level government dignitaries of both sides. And this is the first transnational petroleum pipeline from India and the first South Asian oil pipeline corridor. The landmark pipeline will carry fuel from uh, the Barani refinery via Motihari in Bihar to Amlek Ganj in Nepal and it will ensure smooth, cost-effective and environment-friendly supply of petroleum products to Nepal. Now this is a 69 kilogram longer Kilometer-long pipeline has been constructed by India in just 15 months, half of its 30 months deadline. It has been constructed at a cost of around 350 crore rupees, which is entirely borne by the Indian Oil Corporation. The Botihari Amleganj oil pipeline project was first proposed in 1996. However, the project finally edged closer to reality during Prime Minister Modi's visit to Kathmandu in 2014. News from Jammu and Kashmir now. The centre has constituted a three-member committee to look into the distribution of assets and liabilities among new union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Now, this bifurcation will come into existence on 31st of October, while former Defence Secretary Sanjay Mitra will be the chairman of the committee. Former Retired IS officer Arun Goel and retired Indian Civil Account Service officer Giriraj Prasad Gupte will be the members. And the Home Ministry notification said that as per Section 84 of the Act, the assets and liabilities of the existing state of Jammu and Kashmir will be apportioned between the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Remember, on 5th of August, the centre had announced uh, the abrogation of the special status given to Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370 and the bifurcation of the state into two union territories. Now, according to Section 85 of the Act, the central government, by an order, can establish one or more advisory committees for the, approach, for the uh, apportionment of assets, rights and liabilities.
And in more news from Jammu and Kashmir, the Jammu and Kashmir Chief Secretary Mr. Subramanian has announced uh, that uh, 12 lakh metric tons of uh, apples will be procured through special market intervention price scheme from the farmers. Now, it is for the first time that 60% of the estimated annual apple production, which last year stood at 20 lakh metric tons, will be procured from the apple growers near their doorsteps. Now, the scheme is expected to enhance the income of the apple growers in Kashmir Valley by about 2,000 crore rupees. The period of uh, procurement would be from 1st of September 2019 to 1st of March 2020. And Vice President M. Venkhya Naidu will interact with a delegation of Sarpanchas from Jammu and Kashmir today at his official residence. Now, this uh, delegation will be led by Iqbal Zargar and Akib Mayir of the Bharatiya Janta Yojana Morcha. And the army has released a video of a failed infiltration attempt by Pakistan border action team along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir's Keran sector, where the bodies of the eliminated personnel along with their equipment could be seen. The infiltration bid by the Border Action Team of Pakistan Army took place on the intervening night of 31st of July and 1st of August. The Army later said that four bodies of possibly Pakistani SSG commandos or some of the terrorists had been located on the Indian side of the line of control. Meanwhile, the army has also received inputs that there may be a terror attack in the southern part of our country. Lieutenant General S.K. Saini, GOC in C of the army's southern command, said that some abandoned boats have been recovered in the Sir Creek area. He added that the army has taken measures in the Sir Creek region, keeping in mind the enhanced threat perception. Now, Kerala Police Chief has asked all the district police heads to maintain high alert across the state. The Director General of Police has also directed personnel to maintain heightened vigil at the bus stands, railway stations, airports and also all the places where people gather in large numbers. We have got many inputs that there may be a terrorist attack in the southern part of India and the peninsular India. There have been some boats also which have been recovered, the abandoned boats in the area of Sarkri. We have undertaken measures for capacity building and capability development in the area of the Sarkri, keeping in mind the enhanced threat perception. We are taking precautions to ensure that any of the designs of the inimical elements or the terrorists, they are stalled and they do not get the success which they are wishing for. And on to the other top story that we are tracking this morning, a special investigation team or the SIT set up by the Union Home Ministry has decided to reopen seven anti-Sikh riot cases where the accused were either acquitted or the trial closed. According to a Home Ministry notification, the SIT has taken up the discharged cases for scrutiny or preliminary inquiry. The SIT has issued public notices asking individuals and organizations to provide information related to the seven cases. The SIT was set up on 12th of February 2015 following the recommendation by the Home Ministry appointed a Justice a Retired GP Mathur Committee. Prime Minister Narendra Modi bid farewell to the Principal Secretary Ripendra Mishra at his residence in New Delhi on Monday. Mishra stepped down from his post last week. Now calling Mishra a precious treasure, the Prime Minister recollected his last five years of journey with him. He complimented Mishra for his hard-working nature, dedication towards work and his exemplary career as a civil servant. The function was attended by various union ministers and senior government officials. Former cabinet secretary P.K. Sinha, remember, was on Friday appointed as an officer of special duty by the prime minister in his office.
On to some other news now. Now, India's uh, Post Payments Bank announced on Monday that it has rolled out the Aadhaar Enabled Payment Scheme services. And it has now become the single largest platform in the country for providing interoperable banking services to the customers of any bank by leveraging the last mile unprecedented reach of the postal network. Communications Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad exhorted the bank to aim for a five-fold increase in the customer base and accounts. He said it must target higher volumes of digital transactions to position itself as a catalyst in the country's digital transformation. I want to say that one of the people who have an account चलो पोस्ट ऑफिस में हमारा पेमेंट आया हुआ है मैं चाहता हूं गरीब और ये क्या है डीबीटी मोस्टली फॉर द पुअर मोस्टली फॉर द अंडर प्रिविलेज्ड आई वांट पोस्ट पोस्टल बैंक्स टू बिकम मोर क्लोजर टू द पुअर अंडर प्रिविलेज पीपल ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज माय डायरेक्शन टू ऑल ऑफ यू और ये तभी होगा जब पूरा डीबीटी का पूरा सिस्टम आपके ऊपर राइट करेगा and in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be right back with more news on the other side. Stay tuned. इस टपकते हुए नल को देखिए क्या आपने कभी सोचा है कि अगर एक सेकंड में पानी की दो बूंद गिरती है तो एक मिनट में हम पानी की 120 बूंदों को खो देंगे इसका मतलब है कि हम लगभग 35 मिनट में एक लीटर पानी खो देंगे हर बूंद है कीमती पानी बचाइए Welcome back after the break. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reiterated India's commitment to protect and conserve the environment. Addressing the 14th session of the Conference of Parties or COP of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, Prime Minister Modi said that India has raised its target of restoring degraded land by 2030. India will raise the target of restoring degraded land from 21 million hectares to 26 million hectares by 2030. This was announced by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the Conference of Parties to the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification on Monday. Speaking at the event, the Prime Minister said India's tree and forest cover increased by 0 0.8 million hectares between 2015 and 2017. However, he expressed concern over the shortage of portable water and urged people to conserve water. We are working with the motto of per drop, more crop. At the same time, we are also focusing on zero budget natural farming. We have also introduced a scheme to determine the soil quality of each of the farms and are issuing soil health cards to farmers. Addressing delegates from 196 countries, Modi said India would put an end to single-use plastics in the coming years. India will put an end to single-use plastic in the coming years. We are committed to development of environment friendly substitutes and also an efficient plastic collection and disposal method. I believe the time has come for even the world to say goodbye to single-use plastic. Speaking at the event, Environment Minister Prakash Javadekar said that combating desertification has to be a national movement. Javadekar listed various efforts aimed at afforestation and said the government is committed to sustainable development. Green cover is rising in India. We have 24 percent, but in last five years we have increased by nearly 15,000 square kilometers and we are inching towards our target of having 33 percent cover. 
The UNCCD was adopted in Paris in 1994 to be a legally binding document for fighting desertification through sustainable land management and has been ratified by 196 countries and the European Union. An estimated 7200 participants including ministers and representatives of governments and non-government and intergovernmental organizations from member countries are attending the 12-day event which began in Greater Noida last week. Mohammad Fateh Tipu's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And more news related to environment, Consumer Affairs Minister Ram Vilas Paswan on Monday chaired a high-level meeting and held discussions uh, to uh, in fact avoid and uh, look at the alternatives uh, for single use plastic the meeting was attended by representatives of the plastic industry and other stakeholders where it was decided to find a cheaper alternative to single use plastics he informed that as interministerial committee under the chairmanship of cabinet secretary has been formed to look into the issue of banning single use plastic in one go or in a phased manner Paswan said that the decision to completely remove single use plastic would be taken after consultations with all the stakeholders and uh, priority would be given to consumer interests and environmental protection. Jo sujhav diye hain wo dijiye aur 3 din ke andar mein humne kaha ki aur bhi kya kehte hain de dijiye aur dene ke baad hum log jo hasya karte hain ki jo hai uska copy bana kar ke jitne departments ke kehte hain ki vibhag ke sambandhit hain उनके पास में एक एक कॉपी भेज दिया जाएगा और जहां हम आते हैं पी एम भी भेज देंगे और जो कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी है उनको भी अपना सुझाव जो है उसको क्या कहते हैं कि भेज देंगे And more environment news, the Union Minister for State for Agriculture, Parshottam Rupala, on Monday said that the incidents of crop residue burning have come down and he urged the farmers to completely stop the practice. Inaugurating the National Conference on Crop Residue Management for Farmers from the states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Delhi, Rupala complimented the farmers for bringing down the stubble burning incidents. He also urged farmers to ensure zero burning of crop residue in all villages. सरकार की जो भी इसमें सहायता का स्वरूप है टेक्नोलॉजी का जो आविष्करण है उन सारी चीज़ों को विस्तार से किसानों के साथ हमारे वैज्ञानिक शेयर कर रहे हैं तो इसके लिए ये कार्यक्रम से एक बहुत बड़ा अच्छा मैसेज जाएगा और आने वाले वक्त में हम पराली जलाने से मुक्त वातावरण खड़ा करने में कामयाब होंगे and weather update now heavy rains uh, that are continuing for the last few days uh, have disrupted normal life in madhya pradesh now the met department bhopal has issued a warning for heavy to extremely heavy rainfall in 32 districts of the state in the next 24 hours the warning has been issued at three levels red alert orange alert and yellow alert the rivers are in spate in the state and so far more than a dozen people have died in different accidents due to rain Road connectivity has been broken in most districts and water has entered houses in many areas and due to continuous rains in the state additional water is being released to rivers by opening the gates of 21 dams including Bargi which has created flood like situation in many areas On to some other news now At the 6th the India China Strategic Economic Dialogue in New Delhi that concluded on Monday both countries focused on collaboration in the areas of infrastructure energy high tech resource conservation pharmaceuticals and policy coordination now India raised the issue of the massive trade deficit with China remember in the fiscal year that ended March 2019 India's trade deficit with China was 53.6 billion dollars The 6th India-China Strategic Economic Dialogue in New Delhi ended on Monday. Both sides agreed that the dialogue has emerged as a crucial mechanism to facilitate bilateral trade and investment flows and also enhance economic cooperation between the two sides. Speaking on the concluding day of the 3-day dialogue, Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar emphasized on taking concrete steps to address India's trade imbalance with China. I hope you will realize that we have some serious concerns regarding the growing trade balance imbalance between 
our two countries. And some experts, and, you know, and we therefore in this case must put to you that this is not only an economic concern at the moment, but is beginning to take political connotations in our country. So we have to take steps to address this unsustainable level of trade imbalance between the two countries. India's trade deficit has already crossed $56 billion with China. The two sides also had in-depth discussions reviewing trade and investment climates. They also exchanged views on regulatory procedures of ease of doing business, development of artificial intelligence, high-tech manufacturing and next-generation mobile communications of both countries. In addition, they also identified future areas of collaboration and resolved to work on renewable energy, resource conservation, environmental protection, infrastructure and other areas of bilateral cooperation. We have an ambitious plan to invest $1.5 trillion in infrastructure in the next five years. I really do sincerely welcome Chinese companies in this huge effort that India is going to make in its infrastructure development, which is on the same lines as China made during its three decades after 1980, 1980 when going forward. Set up between the erstwhile planning commission and the National Development and Reform Commission of China during the visit of Chinese Prime Minister Wen Jiabao to India in December 2010, the strategic economic dialogue has since then served as an effective mechanism for enhancing bilateral practical cooperation between both countries. It is good that India and China are talking straight and trying to come to the reality, but it is also a fact that amidst the ongoing trade war between US and China, China needs Indian market. But China would have to address Indian political concerns like Article 370 and also terrorism. Akhile Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Saroj in Delhi. President Ramnath Kovind is in Iceland to hold talks with the country's top leadership and explore areas of bilateral cooperation in various fields. On Monday, President Ramnath Kovind interacted with the Indian business delegation. He is expected to address the India-Iceland Business Forum on 11th of September. And later in the day, the president met with the Indian community and applauded them for their contribution to the local society through their advanced skills and knowledge. President Kovind also invited professionals, especially in the field of geothermal energy from Iceland, to be part of the transformational journey of India. The president noted that major reforms are taking place in India, gaining a new confidence globally. We are proud of your achievements. You convey an image of India that is highly mobile, highly skilled and one whose people are writing the script of the machine intelligence age. You are contributing to the local society through your advanced skills, but equally through your warmth and friendship. We are also looking at how we can learn from Iceland to tap geothermal energy. I invite you to be part of our transformative journey. You have an important role to play in forging technology, investment, tourism and cultural links and strengthening our ties with Iceland and the world. We want to strengthen our bonds with our overseas community. We want to serve you better, be it delivery of passport or consular services. The Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh or the RSS has said that reservation is required because uh, there is a social and economic disparity in the society and it should continue till its beneficiaries feel it is needed. RSS Joint General Secretary Jatata Tre Hosabale added that the organization totally supports reservation as mandated by the constitution. Sports news now, a total of 10 Sri Lankan cricket players have chosen to stay away from the upcoming Pakistan series because of security concerns. Now, this was revealed to the Sri Lankan cricket board on Monday during a meeting with the players who were chosen as part of a preliminary squad to play three ODIs and three T20 matches in Pakistan 
beginning later this month. Now, Pakistani, the, the Sri Lankan players were allowed to decide whether to take part after a security briefing. And 10 players, including Lasit Malinga and Angelo Matthews, chose to stay away from the tour. The cricket board uh, has suggested alternative uh, names for the proposed tour. Remember, Pakistan have not hosted a test on the home soil since gunmen attacked Sri Lanka's team bus in Lahore in 2009. And remembering Bharat Ratna Govinda Palap Pant on his birth anniversary, Vice President Venkaiah Naidu said that Pant was a reformer who abolished the zamindari system in Uttar Pradesh and worked for the eradication of untouchability, upliftment of the poor and the downtrodden sections of the society, gave prominence to agriculture and farmers. The Vice President also said that Balapant piloted the Hindu Code Bill, which provided Hindu women the rights of divorce and inheritance to the ancestral property. And the Ashura a Muharram is being observed with the due reverence in various parts of the country today. Now, this day marks the martyrdom of a Prophet Muhammad's grandson, Hasrat Imam Hussain and his companions who laid down their lives for uplifting, upholding truth, righteousness and justice in Karbala. The processions are being taken out to mark the occasions and religious meetings highlighting the supreme sacrifice of a Karbala martyrs are also being held. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Breakfast News. But before we go, take a look at the weather forecast today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day ahead.